Um, this, it's about 6.30 in the morning and the plan is to take the slug up the Neen uh, as far up as I can get in two days. So I'm going to get through the dog and in a doublet lock, which is about 15 miles that way up the river, and then uh, get through there, travel up through deep, deep into the fens. Very interesting part of the UK. So, got to uh, reconfigure the slug. We're going to put uh, two bikes on the bow. Going to change the sails so that I can just drop the mast and yet sail. So my good sails are coming off and I've got some scabby old ones to put on. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is to pretty much cover the slug with uh, fenders. Not that I'm that fussy about it, but it's just it's a good chance I'm going to bump into things. So that's the plan. Here's a basket full of fenders. The Neen here goes all the way to Northampton. Uh, I'm not going to get that far because there are 30 odd locks to go through and they are big ones. <coughs> I have to say I'd expected the tide to have turned by now. I think high tide's about half past 11, half past 6, half past, you know, five hours. It's six hours, it should be going the other way by now, but clearly it's not. So uh, the other thing I'm going to do is to try not to use the big engine. I'm going to try to use the little outboard as much as possible. I want to save the big engine. The more I use it, the more it wears out, and the little outboard should be absolutely fine for this trip, so that's my plan. But with no tide running underneath me, it's a bit weird. It'll happen. The tide will turn. <laughs> it has to turn. The tide always turns. That's the good thing to do. Okay, so next time you see the slug, it'll be festooned with fenders, and it'll also have two bikes on the front and the mast down. slug is ready and the tide has turned. So I'm going to use the main engine to start off with and then I'm going to put the outboard on the back and use that for the rest of the journey. So we're just going to use the engine to get out of Wisbeach underneath the bridges. been thinking about this rig for a while and the idea is I can drop it really easily yet it still allows me to sail. They're my worst sails so I've got the uh, old mirror main which is actually not in bad nick. 
and this blue Genoa which is designed to clear the bikes and when I come to a a wire or a bridge it should be possible to drop it fairly easily but blimey this tide is whipping along it's great and it's peaceful so you can see I've got a two-part purchase on the front here so that I can drop the mast so all I've got to do is to remove this pole here which is my temporary boom didn't want to damage the gooseneck and then just drop the whole lot back and it should fold down pretty easily. We're doing well, we're doing... ...4.5 knots. Good stuff, and it's peaceful. Whizzo! We are sailing quite a bit faster than the tide at the moment. How many, how, how often do you have to do this then? Not often, it's, it's not that many though really. A year through here? Um, probably about 50. 50? Passages, that's all. Yeah. Wow. But that's probably only about, quite, probably about 30 boats. So here we go, we're going to rise now. Not much, though, because the tide is pretty much here. So we have a loose-footed mane now. They 
they divert it all to here to flood it, flood this, and then ease it into the main river. Wow, this is brilliant. Three knots. Better than you thought, eh? I imagined this. Did you? <laughs> no, the blue skies and how did it treat? Dormitory 1220. The grass. Very well if those were all yours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
to the top of a jungle, being a balloon going to the top of a jungle. 